Then I see very. I put. I always like to put code in my um, apps to make make them safe. So, for example, let's say that this code, they, they press the keyboard, and for some reason the left button didn't exist or had been removed. This bit of code here would say if the left button doesn't exist yet, or it exists but it doesn't have a field called remove self. So it's not a display object. So it's not really a display object because it just got deleted, but it hasn't been cleaned up yet. It hasn't been garbage collected yet. Or all of that is still good, but for some reason it doesn't have the touch handler, which I assigned up here, this business right here. So we're talking about left button. So left button dot touch equals the touch handler that I wrote. If none of those things is true, or one of those things is false, I should say, um, <clears throat> then abort. Basically, you're out of here. Just return true and leave. But if they are true, then what I do is I co-opt the event. I take because yep. you get an event table, and I say it's got 99% of the information I need. So basically, I say event target, and I force it. I assign it to left button because target is one of the fields that the touch event has, but the keyboard event does not. Uh, another thing is, is I'm looking at the X and Y position of the event in my listener, so there's no X and Y for uh, keyboard input. So I just say event X is right in the middle of the left button, event Y right in the middle of the button on the vertical, so it's always the same. Mm -hmm. And then I change the phase, so the keyboard phases are up and down. So up is the equivalent of ended, and down is the beginning, uh, the equivalent of began. So I create this little table at the top called phase convert. That's cool. And I simply say phase convert the phase of the keyboard input. Now assign that value to event phase. In other words, replace up with ended and down with began. And I've just converted a key event, this table, which got passed to me. It's going to get destroyed at the end of this function call anyways. I've temporarily co-opted it, and I pass it directly into the touch handler, and now it thinks it's a touch. See, this is and this is what I was getting at. This I find it so I find this so interesting because you and I sometimes do things similarly but slightly different. When I do this, when I sort of fake uh, an event table like you do, um, what I'll do is set event dot name equals the, the the string touch, and then what I'll do is say left button call the method dispatch event and dispatch that event. So it's slightly yeah, different. Yours, yours saves a line of code, so yours is more efficient. Yeah, there's two different ways. Um, yeah, so you're basically reinserting an existing event into the event. Um, like I'm like I'm essentially faking. Uh, like, well, it's, like I said, it's two, different, it's two different ways to accomplish the same thing, and mine, uh, I realize, yours saves one line of code. So... You could endanger yourself with this. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. Your method, mm -hmm. it, it's fine. Perfectly fine, except it does one dangerous thing. When you do a dispatch event, mm -hmm. that event will not get processed until the frame after. Mm. So if that got destroyed in the interim, your touch handler better handle that, otherwise you're going to get foobar. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's a good thing. I won't spell out what foobar means, but I'm sure... <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going over time here, but I want people to know I'm going to show you a couple more things here, but let me just let the cat out of the bag. Um, I added some more features. So this week what we were supposed to do was make this prettier. We were supposed to add air control. So last week we started off with this. Boring. Circle is our character. Circle is our world environment. We got some squares. Ew, we, we could jump. It was all cool. But what we really wanted was we wanted something beautiful, or at least nicer. We wanted this. Our dude running. It's as easy as changing a Boolean. Yeah, all you have to do is one variable. That's, yeah. For, for certain people who left the environment in a rage, who maybe you don't know who I'm talking about. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> So uh, the point is, is I, I have added this code, but there was a lot more added this week. <laughs> I added the code for air control. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take you on a blazing. I know we're already over our time, but I promise, ten minutes blazing tour. Everything you need in the code. 
I'll encourage you to go look at it and I'll explain how it works at a high level here. So first of all, let me go back to false. In common.lua, which is in the scripts folder, uh, at the top here I've added some more variables. Debug enable was from last week, so if that's true, the other ones are false, then we get something very similar to last week. We get the little markers that show us how far away our player is from these objects. If it's green, the object is marked green. We're, that's the one that is supplying our fake gravity for the world. The down arrow shows us the direction the arrow is, uh, that the gravity is pointing for our guy. Uh, 44, I can't remember what that was. If anybody remembers. Uh, Radius? Uh, no, I think no. it's the magnitude. Of, yeah, it's the magnitude of the gravity for our player. But it, it's irrelevant at this point. So the important bit is here, uh, the arrow points down towards our gravity source. The green one here is our gravity source. These red numbers show us how far away they are. As you can see, they change when we're jumping. So all that's great. It's working. Added to this this week, this pink thing. Let's just call it a pink thing for now. And these little lines pointing out. So this week what we wanted to do was we wanted to do a couple things. We wanted to add air control, but we also wanted to keep our character from being able to jump more than once. So last week you might recall if I jumped and I kept jumping, I could just spring my dude off into the ether. But now if I jump, you can see that the arrow, if you pay attention to this here, you can see that it's going crazy, but I'm only getting one kick. And I'm only getting one kick when this pink circle is touching the thing that I'm next to. So what this pink circle is, is what is called a foot. But typically when you see a platformer, you'll see a foot as a rectangle hanging sort of like out of the bottom. And the job of the foot is it's a physics object that always follows your player or whatever needs the foot to be attached to it. But it's been set up as a sensor so that it has no, it doesn't, touch doesn't this green object when it touches the pink object will not push back on it there's no response so collision detection and response so it is detecting that it is hitting this object but is not responding to the touch it's not responding to I'm sorry to the collision so as a sensor it still gets the began and ended phases of a collision and so um, when it hits an object, I get a began, and the began tells, I use that in my logic to say, okay, uh, my player foot has just touched an object. That means I'm allowed to jump because I am now in contact with an object. But as soon as the pink, let me jump and pause, as soon as the pink is away, as soon as it stops touching this, we get an ended phase on our collision handler. And then the logic in my player code says, oh, I got an ended for my foot, which means I'm now in the air. I just started jumping. I'm no longer allowed to do any more jumps until the foot touches something again. So in short, the foot acts as a sensor that lets me detect when I'm touching things. And when I'm not touching something, I'm not allowed to jump. My logic handles this. And then when I am touching something, I'm allowed to jump. And this is so this is what you way, and this is what you were saying about air control, right? Is that this, well, this is step one in air control. So okay. step one in air control is you have to know you're in the air. But while I ha while I know I'm in the air, I might as well prevent myself from jumping multiple times because we don't want people to use jumps to navigate around the world other than to get between objects. If I allow them to jump while they were in the air. You know, that might be cool, but that's not what we're trying to simulate in this game. We're trying to reproduce this as closely as we can with the tools we have. And in their game, they must be fed. You're allowed to jump once, but not in the air. If you're in the air, you can't keep jumping. You gotta Then gravity will pull you back down to the object. However, air control. So air control is your player is in the air. This is a platformer thing, pretty much. But you'd like to be able to steer the player a little bit. So like in typical Mario Brothers or whatever, the guy jumps, and then if you move left or right, you can still kind of move, nudge your character. They don't move as fast, but they move a little bit. And what this allows you to do, and this is not true for all platformers, but in some, is it allows you to make up for mistakes. So you jump, and you're like, oh, I'm going to hit the, the Goomba on the side instead of on the head. 
you can nudge the guy a little bit to the right, a little to the left as he's falling, and hit the, the target, what you want to hit, or land where you want to land. So in, in They Must Be Fed, we don't have it yet, but there's going to be like spikes and other stuff. And you're in the air, you don't want to hit those things because you're going to die. So you've jumped and you kind of goofed up your timing on your jump. But with air control, you can still move to the right or to the left. 